good people. Hey, everybody. Obviously, hey. you can see we are in rare form. We are in rare form. I really hope we don't edit that first part out. I, I think there's something to be said about the vibe that yes. we have this that's going on this afternoon. We do. And part of it is, you know, we've been talking a lot, Andrea, about the paradox that we live, the, the lack of binary beliefs. The, the fact, the truth that there's not a black and white, good or bad. That even as I say hello, good people, sometimes we're not all good. And sometimes you want to say hello to all the people. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. And, and that we want to believe that no matter what situation or season or station we are in life, that we're still worthy of love. We are. We love, love, love. Yet another opportunity to talk about love. We do. But love in a different sense today. I yeah. think today will lead us to... Some deep-rooted surrendering. I think so. I like how you said that, deep-rooted surrendering. So here's what we'd like to talk about, friends. And that we, we are, we're going to talk about this and really believe that our prompt to you that we want you to think about will be something that frees you as well. But we're going to admit that the topic is not easy to consider in your own life, but also to, to shift. Um, I'm going to admit that I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Let's just go there. Well, Let's just start there, okay, shall we? I'm going to well, stand in so my true friend, family, and, your truth, and I am your sweating. Truth. Yeah, I am uncomfortable. My cheeks are red, and all I can do is think about how long is this damn episode going to be. I don't <laughs> want to do it. Thing. I don't want to do thing. it. How often have we heard that it is good to be vulnerable? I'm going to call it the V word. Mm. <laughs> it's the other V word. <laughs> the other v word. <laughs> vulnerable we ask it of people we use it like it is a sign of a really good mature relationship emotional 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 maturity maturity. if you can be transparent and be vulnerable then you have risen and you you are worthy you're worthy you love yourself you know how to love others you you know how to love others but you know it's been hitting me It, it has not stopped hitting me in the past few years how difficult it is despite the fact that I believe in it. Oh, you believe in being vulnerable. I believe in the value of it. Oh, that's different. (laughs) We all can philosophically believe. We believe believe in Santa Claus. We believe in a lot of things. (laughs) Hell, I believe in perfect utopian spaces, right? We believe in Mm. the value of being vulnerable, Tasneem. I do. But I believe in the importance Mm -hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. We believe in the benefits and I how do. it manifests. I do. But really, are we living that out? I believe that the practice of vulnerability is difficult. I'm talking about are you doing it, baby girl? I, I take a deep breath. And here's why. <laughs> because scared. it is one of my major goals in life before I make it to the bye and bye. <laughs> so vulnerability <laughs> is to is... be known. Uh-huh. And I want to be known fully. So that if somebody says that's just how Tasneem is, it's because they understand my contours. So being seen and being known for you, is that vulnerability? I think vulnerability is is the pathway to it. So if I expose things about me that my instinct says is unsavory information for you to ingest, like, oh, you don't want you want you don't want them to know that. Why? Because that makes you look less than perfect. It makes you look confused. It makes you look. Human, inexperienced human human those aren't the first word. human's not the first word that comes to me it's not. it makes you look inexperienced it makes you look unready it makes you look unprepared it, make, it makes you look a lot of knots right mm-hmm. it's a lot of knots and so if i expose that will you will you, will you still like me will you still love me so but in order for you to know me you must know these parts of me and so you why? must know that tasneem overthinks <laughs> You have to know that, like, Lord, how, is she still talking about that? <laughs> she is. <laughs> and so what I've done is identify people in my life who can handle my dimensions. And I have, I have a sweet man in my life who says, everyone does not deserve all your dimensions. That's such a brilliant That's great, right? Saying. Everyone doesn't deserve it. So you don't have to be out there feeling like, but you need to know all of me. Not everybody needs to know all of you. But that's, that's for those very beautiful. sort of sacred relationships, what I've learned is that they don't naturally get my dimensions either. It's still a push for me, Andrea, to say, this thing happened. It was my bad. I really didn't know blah, blah, blah enough for it to be successful. I fell on my face, scraped my knees, whatever else. I made a poor choice. I made a choice. 
even in the relationships that I super value, vulnerability continues to make my knees knock. And so I agree with the special man in your life. I 100% agree that everyone is not worthy mm. of seeing. You've heard me say it. Like, everybody's mm-hmm. not worthy. You of, don't get all these you Andreas. You don't get all of the, all the me's, mm-hmm. right? But, so let's talk about I, the relationships that you do value. Don't they, don't they get <clears throat> to benefit from you risking being known? Risk? It is a risk. It's a leap. It is a risk. But the other side of that risk is what? There's being known. And being rejected. It's a possibility. I said I didn't want to do this freaking episode. <laughs> Let me just say it again. Do you, do, you hear how, do you hear our tones? I'm over here trying to convince You're you. You're trying to convince me <laughs> that I should be vulnerable with, with, with the and, people who you trust to hold it. I do. <sighs> To a certain extent, but I, too, wear the mask. And unfortunately, there are only, like, this many people. It's like, okay. This many. You like, don't need you a can, crowd. You don't need a crowd. Like, this many mm-hmm. that I am even willing or even courageous enough. Mm, courageous enough and willing, like, to make an attempt to be totally vulnerable. I don't even know if I will ever be totally vulnerable with more than, like, three, four people in my life. I don't know that we need a squad. Of like uh, of like many folks. But I think that let me ask you this. Have you ever been surprised by the aftermath of a deep share because it turned out differently than your greatest fear? Every time. It's always turned out better. better. I'm 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 thinking in the past few years, I'm thinking in the at least past three, four years that when I have been um quite vulnerable mm-hmm. and in deep sharing what I thought, all of the things that I told myself, why I would never get to this place and take off the mask or remove the armor because I was fearful of this thing might happen, and none of it happened that way. So what did happen? Acceptance, understanding, mm-hmm. appreciation, love, And guess like. what? You give me that all the time. Yeah, but it's easier to give that. It's it's a lot easier for me to to to. Be that person for you to just tell you to, it's me. I said that to you. I just said to you, I was like, it's me. You don't have to, like, it's just me. I want you to be totally who you are in all of the dimensions that you are with me. That's easy for me to play that role in any relationship, in any friendship. It's easy for me to be her. Mm. But to be the one to take off of her mask, Mm -hmm. yeah. Not so much. I and take my, it off sometimes. I want to put it back on. I get it. And then it. I want to put like a corner I, of it on and just maybe like the eye part. The phantom of the, the, phantom opera, of the opera mask. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to do the Mardi Gras version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we I'm do like, the Mardi Gras yeah. mask? I, but I think the challenge to our listeners is the very thing that we're seeing is that even though we can intellectually say we believe in the philosophy of transparency this and vulnerability, that even in our relationship, Andrea, and we rock with each other on a like, I can call you and say, yo, I quit. I don't want to do this no more. And and we'll talk. And it's not for the purpose of solving the problem. No, of course. It's just like saying, I need to be able to say that this is funky and I don't like it. And we can do that with and each other. And we can other. do it but with each other. even in that, I still have you to see. I have to tell myself, I can share this with Andrew. Absolutely. I can share this with my girl. Absolutely. I can tell my homegirl this. Absolutely. What are we freaking afraid of? And if you don't mind, can I, can I, can I bring Belle into this? Oh, please. But Auntie Belle, come on. Yeah, this is a year of Belle, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we're doing. And she says that we cannot know love if we remain unable to surrender mm-hmm. our attachment to power. If any feeling of vulnerability strikes in us, it becomes terror in our hearts. Terror. She said terror. Terror in our hearts. And that's how it feels. And then it feels like lovelessness torments us. So that is what Sister Bell says. If we cannot know love, we cannot know love if we're unable to surrender. But she says that surrendering and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable Remains that we're relinquishing power. Mm-hmm. And that was hard for me because, you know, I, it's kind of hard for me to not be in control most of the times. We know that's, that's, that's who I am. But it's a lot of us. But what happens with that, though, is terror strikes at our hearts. Mm-hmm. And we consistently live in this place of, of being afraid. So I think we also live in a place of underdeveloped potential. If that relationship if remain, could be amazing, however, so we're not willing to fly as high as we can in it. 
And so you'll never know what the horizon looks like in that relationship. I need to get to the why, because you started off by saying, uh, sharing about an amazing man in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, And and even in that relationship, you've Mm -hmm. been able to be vulnerable? I... Oh, in that relationship, I am pushing myself uh, to be vulnerable. It is not an instinct. Okay. My instinct is to be composed. And when you have put, you just asked me, when you have pushed yourself to be vulnerable and taken off that mask, what mm-hmm. has happened? <clears throat> Absolute shock. The response? I. <laughs> that was the response. I'm like. Well, I could do what I've always done, which is shield you from the parts of me that I'm not proud of, uh, based on my own perfectionism, right? I want to just I want you to just get the sunshine task name, but the truth is I got shadow. And so if I show you the shadow, and it can come from any place. It could be anything. It could be golly. If I show you the shadow. If I show you the shadow, you're going to see that and, and I know the thing that you admire about me has to do with the things that I admire about myself that are all that are sometimes fleeting. Yes, I have great thoughts sometimes, but not all the time. Yes, I'm super neat, but my baseboards look a little scary. Yeah, you know, it's like I love taking care of my girls. Sometimes am I being too permissive? Do I need to be more of a disciplinarian? Like I have all these questions that say you're not perfect. You're human, as you you're said. You're human. So if if I believe that I can allow you to see that I am both shadow and light. Is your love big enough to contain both? You said it was, and you said that love is bigger than that. We're talking about belief versus practice. And so what I'm talking about something that, you know, we pride ourselves on being these intellectuals. Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe in it. I get the philosophy. Yeah, theory. In theory, right? And so then when something comes up, because life be life, and then something always comes up, how honest am I going to be about things that I need to be accountable for? And how honest am I going to be about things that might be embarrassing? How honest am I going to be about things that didn't quite work out? Or am I just going to sort of let you think, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Because no, it's not. It ain't fine. So I push myself because I want to be known. And I actually am vocal about wanting to be known. So I'll take a deep breath and I might say, this is difficult for me to talk about. And you're like, why? Because I think it's embarrassing. Why? Because just in my mind, some of this stuff is tacky. Why? And I'm like, have I been judging other people who are experiencing the things that I'm experiencing wow. and thinking their lives are tacky? Ooh. Bloop, as my daughter would say, bloop. So I'm like, ooh, maybe. So let's talk. Like, there's that's something else to think about. But I, I have been pushing myself. When I say pushing myself, I mean I, I do this with counsel. <laughs> like, if left to my own devices. You all should really see Andrea over here. I'm struggling. Andrea. Andrea. And I'm, guess what, friends? I am so happy with her leading the entire conversation because that means I don't have to say a thing. All I'm saying I'm so good right now. Keep going. And what else? Tell, tell me more. Sir, tell to me your more. point, Andrea, I'm cool with it being a handful of people in my life being able to see my dimensions. What it helps me do is laugh at myself because if you are constantly thinking you have to be perfect for folks, you are not laughing. You're con- you're rigid. So you're constantly performing. You're constantly so now I'm like, "Hey, cool, that didn't work out." Like, you know, <laughs> it might be anything where I'm like, "Oh, man, that's jacked up." And I'll let you see that something happened that was jacked up. Right. And and you stay? You didn't go anywhere? Right. This thing happened with one of my children and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is an emergency. This is so shameful. I'm embarrassed." And you didn't go anywhere? Right. And so sometimes, actually, I'm testing the relationship out because I'm trying to figure out where in this fence that I have of people that I love, can I place you? And you're testing the relationship out. I'm testing myself your, out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let's. I was going to call you on that because you're not testing relationship. I'm testing. That's me. what you want. You're testing yourself. Yeah. Can I? Can I be all of? Can I be more of testing than not? Because I do believe yeah. everybody doesn't get all of you. No. Not I a single soul. No, I don't care I'm how much you love precious, them. I get that. But I do understand that when I feel the most proud of my relationships is when I can be more of me than less. A hundred percent. And I want more spaces that I nurture where I can be more of me than less. I, I don't ex- agree. I expect me to love me 100%. I agree. But I want to be able to give you the opportunity to Agreed. say, sis, I know you really don't have matching socks on, but guess what? Or no socks. Because <laughs> I don't have any right now. I don't. Do you see my feet? <laughs> I'm being vulnerable. Oh, like, can I all of that? that? Like, like, some of the I didn't stuff, feel like putting them on. I Jeez, mean, some I of the stuff is like, and so like to be able to say, I can fall down in front of you 
scrape my knees. Not only do you give me a Band-Aid, we make <laughs> jokes within two hours. We joking right, about it. Right. Like that is, and that I haven't always had the confidence in myself nor the relationship to be able to hold it. So now I'm about only nurturing rela- When I say nurture, I'm talking deeply you're, cultivate. You're serious about it because on, it's only on, those relationships. With the, with the years I have left. That's right. Oh. With the years I have left, I want to nurture slash cultivate slash develop slash co-create. All of those things. relationships that say, do I get to be more of me than less? It's when we are, we have asked ourselves of that. When are we most comfortable? Mm-hmm. When are we most happy and mm-hmm. energized and, and, and feeling a sense of, of, of relief yeah. that I can breathe, right? I, I can just breathe and be me. When I am at that place that I can just be me, mm-hmm. I know who I'm around. Mm-hmm. You know, know, you know the folks. I know the folk. Yeah. I see the faces yeah. and I can call them by name. I shall not, but I will. Yes. I could easily. I know mm-hmm. that place. But what I think has held us back for such a long time, um, because regardless of, of, of introvert, extrovert, we laugh about that. Regardless of that, we both love being in community. And in community with others, in community with family. We both love being supportive and, and pouring into everyone else. But what we have done, Tasney, we have done for such a long time is allowed the mask to remain on mm. for fear of how other people will perceive it. Mm-hmm. Because we wanted to stay in community. Mm-hmm. We want to stay in relationship. Mm-hmm. We want to stay in, in, in whatever spaces to be a part of that. But you're saying now the only space that I have now in these mm-hmm. last few with the, with whatever, the time I have decades left. and mm-hmm. galaxies that mm-hmm. we are here, the mm-hmm. time we have left, mm-hmm. I'm only cultivating those. That's it. I just said I was I last spent I spent last week um, past five four or five days in North Carolina, and I just said to to a friend, I said, you know, there was you know you know part of the circling, part of undoing all the isms of the world, and <clears throat> I noticed where I was putting my energy. And who I was putting my energy in. And it wasn't in the places and the people that everybody else, the masses, were putting their energy in. And I said to our friend, I only have so many hours of a day that I'm not constantly doing and giving and giving. So the hours that I have left in these days that we're, I'm putting all of my energy into these sisters right here, these young sisters, right? That's all I have the capacity to do. I choose. You get I to, am choosing to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And I chose to be vulnerable mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. But I didn't do that with everybody in the space. For the little time that I had with mm-hmm. these sisters in North Carolina, I wanted to be, and I wanted them to know that they could be totally transparent and vulnerable mm-hmm. to me. And they were. Mm-hmm. But they only were because I also was able to do that. Because you led. And, I, and, for, and more importantly, because I chose not to try and do that in the full community. You were, I was selected, you were selected about who I was going to there be vulnerable go. with. And shouldn't we be? I think so. I think so, I too. I think that th- these, 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 and you would love these sisters, these three sisters. I was on, on, on throughout the entire week, we shared and we talked mm-hmm. and we shared some stuff that we all were going through, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's the work that we do or the lives and family, spouse, children, you mm-hmm. name it. We In four days, people mm-hmm. that we have never been able to, we've never been with each other before. But we were able to be vulnerable because there was no fear of if I show you this part of me, you're not going to like me. Because I was like, I don't care. I'm going to show you who I am because I need you to show me who you yeah. are. Yeah. But that did include everybody else. No. And it, I don't believe it has to. But we have been so, in because of who we are, so concerned with the larger mm-hmm. community. Yeah. And you're saying now that I'm going to only do this with who I choose to? Because those are the folks who are ready for me. Oh, not and everybody think, is ready for no, and and or, or we're not they? for everybody. We're, we're not for you know my favorite shirt that says we're not that. for everybody, and that not, is fine. That's I think also that um, because the invitation to be vulnerable is such a big ask. I'm going to need some gentleness where I bring my vulnerability. Yeah, I don't want to struggle with you and feel like. Um, my own insecurities around my worthiness, if I'm totally myself. It's going to run up against your concerns about whether I'm worthy of you if yeah. I'm totally my like I, that that to me feels like way too much work. It does. So what I'd rather do is say, Tash, you can do this. You can have this conversation. Um, breast cancer has been one where I've you've seen me go, I don't want anyone to think about me in terms of breast cancer. I just, you know, it happened. I made some choices. <laughs> right, <laughs> right? Let's right. move on. And there are people who are like, Tasneem, they get the short they soft, get the soft word. Tasneem. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about you and your breast cancer. 
I have a friend who has breast cancer. Can you talk to her? And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Mm. And that's cool that you come to me and you think, okay, what are all the identifiers I could use with task name and that something like breast cancer comes up? I used to be shy about it. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want you to identify me as yeah. a person who's been a patient or had this thing happen and didn't she eat kale? Yeah. Like, maybe this is a curse. Like, I know all of the judgments around some certain things, but I also know that it's my truth. Yeah. And so that being able to be vulnerable, vulnerable about what my breast cancer experience has brought to my life and taken out of my life, mm-hmm. vulnerable, sis. Divorce. Yeah. Divorce is seen as a failure. And so it's like, well, I could see it as a failure. I could or, see it as destructive, or I could see it as, you know what? It was the end of a season and the beginning of another. I can it. rewrite that's that it. thing. That's but it. who do I share that dimension with? I'm sharing it here in Truth Be Told because I actually believe it could help other people contemplate the big areas of their lives that they can have an open door of selective communication selective. with. And, and, and it helps them realize that all the things that they have carried mm. and are carrying. You can put it down. You can put it down. You can put it because down. Because if you don't put it down, you risk. You gonna hurt your back carrying it into the next ship. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you gonna carry that bad yeah. boy with you into and, the next and, ship. And and there are soft places to put it. Yeah. And so now you know I have so much encouragement around talking about breast cancer and helping people understand the wild and unexpected healing that comes from disease. Who right. knew? Right. I can talk to people about how the dissolving of a relationship opens the doors for a new relationship with yourself. Who knew? Who knew? I can have this conversation with my daughters who may one day have these conversations. And so I wasn't always there. I was like, survivor. Yeah. And so now I'm going, guess what? I get to be tender around some topics. I get to be sensitive to some things. I get to be insecure sometimes. Do you know how many people walk by me and I'm like, well, she has her cleavage out. (laughs) And I'm like, because you don't have cleavage. I know. And I'm like, and that's okay. And then my 12-year-old's like, look at my cleavage. And I'm like, you know what, Tasneem? None of this has to make you feel unworthy, but it can be an invitation to say, it's true. It this is, true. is my truth. And and it can be complicated. There you go. And and the reality is you're choosing to how you want to share and be vulnerable. Absolutely. With, right? And I'm choosing the people with whom I want to do that. So because truth be told, listeners. if I'm always masked up, if, if I'm always masked up, I will never, ever reach my truth. You, and you don't and know never how that amazing yeah. that relationship could be. Yeah. You'll but never see the horizon on you it. You don't. You, you talked about breast cancer and you talked about uh, divorce. And mm-hmm. I remember um, I, I lost both my parents at such a young age. And I and then losing like grandfather and grandmother and so grief, I, I didn't want to constantly be in a place when I tell you people just kept coming into my life who lost a parent, lost mm-hmm. a grief, lost a child, right? Couldn't birth another child, couldn't have any other children. I, I hated the feeling of all of these people coming to me with all of these their, so, their, their stories, their stories mm-hmm. of hurt and their stories of pain and their stories of loss. Mm-hmm. And then I said, huh, or maybe, mm-hmm. just maybe. Maybe I can be a little bit vulnerable with them and help them understand that we don't always have to see loss mm-hmm. the way we've traditionally been taught yeah. to see loss. Yeah. What happens if if we can even change that? What happens if I'm I can become totally vulnerable mm-hmm. and talk about like you know Mother's Day is is what in two weeks and and talk about like shit. What does here we go again? You know another holiday without a parent or another another whatever it is mm-hmm. that I can be totally vulnerable and be like huh, guess what. We can do this. We can do it. I hear you mm-hmm. saying all the things of how do you help people who have lived through beyond cancer, mm-hmm. right? And so I made it a part of my mission to help people understand you can live beyond grief. Like, let me show you how to do it. Yes. But I've only been able to do that by being totally transparent to say, I don't have my stuff together. Mm-hmm. I still hurt. I still miss my mom. I, there's not a day. Like, I don't wait till a freaking Mother's Day. To be like, oh, now I miss her, and here's an ode to her. I don't yeah. need to do that in yes. May. I miss her mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. But this is what that missing looks like. That's I've it. shifted my life to think about how I can be vulnerable in that space. Mm-hmm. I'm going to challenge myself to figure out how I can be vulnerable mm-hmm. in other spaces. Sure. Not with the just people that. you choose. With the people that and I choose. And we know we got to. people. We got people. Yeah. So literally, can if we can, we don't have to name them, but yeah. can you just like give me two characteristics of the folk that you share, that you are most vulnerable with. 
Oh, did you God. show up? You know, one of them sitting right here. With I'm you. like, you knew other than Andrea because we other talk about me. we talk about our our vulnerability with so each with, other all the time. Think of two people that we are vulnerable with, with beside each other. Totally, oh my God. In the past three to five years, who have we been totally vulnerable? It, with? No doubt, John knows who he is. <laughs> Shout, <laughs> Shout out. out. Shout out. That's on purpose. It's like <gasps> deep breath. Okay, this thing happened, da, 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 da. and his responses, I'm telling you, are so neutral. So what is? I was going to say, what is it about him that? Um, what is it about anybody that 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 characteristic that you can be vulnerable with? What is it about my brother? He just doesn't ever act like things are outrageous. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't catastrophize. He, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's like, okay. And in my mind, I, thank you, because I'm already catastrophizing I myself. Know. Oh, I know. So, no, he just kind of acts like this is all life. And we regularly say, you know, that's just life. That's what that life is. Life is life. In. Right. And so this idea that there's no grand expectation that I don't stumble over here or that he only expects, you know, Perfect eyebrows and <laughs> like, you know, I don't know, uh, no mud on my high heels. Like there's no like there's you not, could literally just yeah. no judgment. For me, it's the it's the very little. He just wants you to little, be yourself. He it. just wants you to be yourself. And understanding that being myself is is sordid sometimes. It's flawed. It's human. human. Who, who, who for you other than me? Oh, I've got a list. I don't want to name people because yeah. then somebody's going to listen to it and uh-huh. say, oh, you didn't name me. But you me. have people. I have people. Mm-hmm. I have people. And I'm thinking about, like, when I'm most vulnerable and how do I how, how do I show up and mm-hmm. how have I been able to show up? I've been able to to unveil scars. And, unveil and, like, and, scars. and that's metaphorically. That's mm-hmm. You can fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. I've been able to realize that you can actually see me and I don't have to be performing. I don't always have to be performing and on. Mm-hmm. 90% of the folk out there love for us. They love us okay. because we're on. We bring something to them. We Absolutely. we elevate the spaces. Absolutely. I don't always want to be that. No. Right. And so when I cannot be on yeah. and I can share scars and share history and share that I'm afraid or I'm weak or I'm tired or this doesn't feel good. Mm. For me, that's when I can be most vulnerable. And I have found in the past few years that when I'm in that space and I can share that that space, that's when I know that Mm -hmm. I can take off the mask Mm -hmm. because I can't I can't grow. I can't love. I can't stand in truth Mm -hmm. Can't grow in truth if I'm not willing to be that vulnerable. I love that. What do we I want our that. guests to join us on this? I said, everybody, you friends, did that I didn't want to talk about this. But I you really did. did. I, you did. I don't know if I did great. I avoided it. You know, I'm really good at projecting back to you. So tell me more, <laughs> Tessie. So what do we want our listeners we to do with this? We want our listeners, family, here's what we want you to do. And, and I hope that you heard from this segment that we pushed ourselves a bit um, together and, and individually. We want you to think about the relationships where you get to show up as most of you. And if you want to share or think about, um, you, you know, there's different ways to get in touch with us. You know that looking at where we are on Instagram and Facebook, communicate with us about the relationships that you are cultivating and nurturing and developing and co-creating that invite you to be as much of yourself as possible. The shadow and the light. And tell us about it. Tell us about tell us about what makes that relationship special. Why you show up in ways that you might not show up other places. Why you're selective. And until then, this is Truth Be Told. Certainly, truth be told, and we want you to remember who we are and tell other people. We'd like you to like, share, follow, and subscribe. Truth be told, and that's going to be at Truth Be Told Pod, P O D at the back. At Truth Be Told Pod, let people know what you're listening to. Let us know what you like that you're listening to. Let us know what you don't like, and then we'll see you next time. And remember, this is Truth Be Told. Oh, 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 oh.